Hey everybody, welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. Today we're going to take on a discussion with Guy Kawasaki. Now Guy has written his 15th book. It's called Wise Guy. Get it? <laughs> it's not bad. Not bad. So uh, we're going to chat with Guy today because there's a lot of great stuff in this book that I want to uh, quiz him on. Maybe grill him a little bit. So let's see how it goes. And as soon as we're finished this interview, he's heading down to the beach to go surfing. Hmm. Guy, how are you? You're not going surfing today, I take it. <laughs> you know we're in Canada, Guy. There, there, I, there's only snow surfing here. Uh, ah. Maybe a little bit of wind surfing. But, yeah, but, uh, that's but you it. have better donuts. So, the, you know, a couple of times we've talked in the past, you've been totally obsessed with hockey, ice hockey. Yeah. And you wanted to get to the rink. Yeah. Now you want to get to the beach. What happened to hockey? Yeah, the ice melted. So, you know... It, <laughs> Climate change, so you have to switch sports. Oh, well, that's very uh, very thoughtful and mindful of you. Um, because it seems now it's it's all about the surfing. It is all about I've given up hockey for surfing. Okay. Surfing is harder than hockey, yeah. Okay. And it, it's great because you're out there in the fresh air as opposed to, you know, the rink. So, oh, good for I, you. I, now, i got to ask you, um, so this cover... Uh, the photograph, uh, wise guy. What were you thinking on this particular shot? Because that's a very, that's an interesting story right there. How did they well, get it, you to get this shot? Listen, it, it, I don't want you to think it's planned. So photographer comes up, sets up a, you know, shoot. Yeah. Probably half a day, shoots, I don't know, 2,000 shots, and they pick that one. So, you know, how the hell do I know what I was thinking at that moment? <laughs> Well, you, you, you look like you know something that the rest of us should know, but only you were going to know. That was, my, yeah. that was my impression. So why, what, what prompted you to, to do Wise Guy? A big advance. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe another, on another level, besides okay. the big advance from Penguin, <laughs> what, what, was the, uh, what was the motivation? This is your 15th well, well, book. Yeah, the motivation is that uh, I I figured out that, you know, I'm in that sweet spot where I've acquired the knowledge, but I've not yet forgot the knowledge. <laughs> so this is that time period where i got to write it. Because yeah. before I couldn't write it because I didn't have the knowledge. Later I won't be writing it because I forgot it. So this is it. So this is a compilation of the stories of my life and all the the happenstances and, and funny stuff and bad stuff that affected me and the lessons that I learned. Yeah. It's, it's like chicken that, for the soul. It's great that every once in a while you have that block called wisdom, and, and then we get a chance to kind of dig in a little bit deeper on, okay, what was really yeah. the learning that uh, that Guy had? So, Guy, I want to cover these uh, 10 points of wisdom that you have uh, early in the book, and it's done in sort of a Letterman fashion. So number 10 is live off your parents as long as possible. Now, you have four, four children. Uh, are you really going to back this up? <laughs> well, luckily, my, my kids never read what I write, okay? So <laughs> I'm good to go. But, but my point, point is this, Alan, that, you know, you're going to work for the rest of your life. And <laughs> you should try to delay that as long as possible. So if you can live off your parents, live off your parents. I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> exactly. And, and as parents, you know, we, we dedicate our lives to making our kids' life better. Um, don't deprive us of, of that satisfaction. <laughs> so you're saying it's a win-win. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> At least for a few years. Yeah. Maybe not always a grin-grin, but overall it's a win-win. So <laughs> this, this number nine is my favorite. And, and, I, yeah. and I hope people will get this. And, and you say... Pursue joy, not happiness. Yes. So help us unpack that a little bit. Sure. So I, I think that happiness, uh, people have the impression that happiness is a permanent or semi-permanent state yeah. where you're always happy, right? So very high bar. You're always happy. I, I don't think that's realistic in life. And so what's more important is you pursue episodes of joy. For example, um, one of the great joys of my life is surfing with my children. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean I can surf with my children every day. 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, my life is every day pixie dust and unicorns. Right. But, you know, that peak of joy when I'm surfing with my kids is what makes life worth it. Yeah. You can feel it, can't you? It just goes through your whole body when you're in yes. that state of joy. Happiness yes. could just be this. But uh, well, that's great. That's good advice. Uh, the other point, number eight, is challenge the known and embrace the unknown. So yeah. do, you, do you find people can do this or do they just want to stick in their comfort zone in the known? Well, most people want to stick in their comfort zone. I can't say I exactly blame them because yeah. it's the easy path. But uh, this is a lesson of Steve Jobs and Apple that, you know, they challenge the known. I mean, people, for example, you know, experts, quote, knew that an Apple store would be a failure. And no store could be a, a single company's products and exist in a mall. People want to come to a shopping mall, go to a store that has a lot of different stuff from a lot of different manufacturers. So the known was you can't have a single brand store. Well, guess what? Apple disproved that. So my, my point here is that, you know, when somebody tells you, well, this is absolutely how it is, including me, you should question that. Yeah. Excellent. Number seven is learn to speak a foreign language, play a musical instrument, or play non-contact sports. And I know your kids have, playing foot, have played football before, but I think your youngest is not going to be playing football because... No. Well, you know, they, they played football before we knew about um, CTE and concussions and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But, I mean, knowing what we know now... Why would you let your kids play football? Yeah. I mean, I just, I, that's not rational to me. Right. So, yeah, so football is not on the table. Um, and, and now listen, they, they play competitive team sports. That's fine. There's a lot of value. I play football. I love football. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, but I think that, you know, in addition to competitive team sports, you know, really, for the rest of your life, it's very hard to get you know, 22 people to play football or I don't, I don't even know how many people play in soccer. I mean, it's nine or whatever. So it's 18, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but an individual sport, tennis, you know, mountain biking, hiking, running, surfing. Surfing. <laughs> you can do the rest of your life. And I think that's the key. Okay. Great. Now, I've been to your high school and uh, very nice out in Honolulu. But, you know, I've yeah. also been to President Obama's high school. Yeah. Is, there, is there a little bit of a rivalry between those two institutions? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like uh, what would be similar, you know, maybe the rivalry between Calgary and Edmonton or Toronto <laughs> and Montreal. Yeah. Um, USC and Stanford, you know, yeah. it's that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure both teams, uh, both schools had good teams because uh, the, the facilities look terrific. Oh, so, yeah, they are. Cool. The other point on number six is, is continue to learn. Well, come on. I, I, I teach MBA students, and, and, and they're tired. <laughs> they say, I don't want, oh, I know everything. I paid $56,000 for this thing uh, or $100,000, yeah. so now I know everything, right? So why are you saying continue to learn? Well, I'm saying that, uh, you know, learning doesn't end in school. And arguably, learning begins when you leave school. Right. So I'm trying to prevent people from thinking, okay, I graduated, done. Now I'm just, you know, going off the rest of my life, not acquiring new skills. Yeah, at, at an extreme, um, I started hockey at, I think, 44, and I started surfing at 62. So, you know, you wouldn't exactly say that, ah, starting hockey at 44, that's, that's, you know, that's the peak period to learn hockey. You certainly wouldn't say that about learning surfing at 62. All right. So my point here is that you, know, you can learn for the rest of your life. Yeah, and should learn, right? Absolutely, yes. I, I, yeah. I, think, I think the minute you stop learning, they, they close the lid on the coffin. The problem is some of those people have stopped learning and the lid on the coffin is not closed. <laughs> it's still going to the office every day. Exactly. Okay, number five, learn to like yourself or change yourself until you can like yourself. What's yeah. the deal with that? Well, the deal with that, I once interviewed a drug dealer and, and a drug addict, and she basically said, listen, guys, you know, the reason why people take drugs is because they, they don't like what they 
are. And so, you know, not liking what you are leads you to drugs, which makes you even worse and like yourself even less. So it's a downward spiral. So the problem is not to escape, but to, to fix the problem. Gotcha. So I want to go to, I'm going to skip to number one on the Letterman list here. Yeah. Um, number one, enjoy your family and friends before they are gone. Yes. Yeah. So my theory there is that nobody ever looks back at the end of his or her life and says, you know what? I should have worked more. I yeah. should not have taken the weekends off. I should have traveled more for my business. Uh, nobody ever says that. Right. And so it would be nice if you realize that before you're dead. Um, <laughs> and so that's, that's my point. Yeah. I mean, what good is it to realize it after you're dead? I mean, as far as I know, ooh, you know, that's not going to help you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only after you're dead, but you know, when you're near death, <laughs> yeah. Oops. it's too late. So the thing about you and social media, and I started to get involved in social media when I saw you um, become a fire hose. Um, <laughs> back Is that a compliment? <laughs> back in the all top days. And, yeah. and I, was, I was teaching and I thought, wow, what a great way to uh, transfer knowledge in these yeah. mini blogs called tweets or whatever in your postings. So, I, but the thing I learned from you was not just to be a fire hose, but to make sure that I wasn't an asshole. <laughs> You know, it's a natural tendency on my part, but in honor of you and 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 your your advice, I decided uh, to 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 do that. As you say in the book, transparency is overrated if you are an asshole. So, is that something that you've been able to stick to? I don't know. You tell me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that uh, the way that social media works well is you always try to add value to people's lives. Right. That, that value could be sharing beauty, sharing entertainment, sharing knowledge, sharing analysis, you know, sharing stuff. So it's not about what you want to share as much as about what people get value from, which right. is very different. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I want to correct you that you know, the concept of a Canadian asshole is an oxymoron. I have never... <laughs> I've never met a Canadian I don't like, really. Thank you. Now, you've also said that think of social media uh, like Tinder instead of eHarmony. Yes. Where, where are you coming from there? Well, I, I'm trying to make the case that uh, people make a pretty quick decision on social media about whether you're worth following, worth paying attention to, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, in a world... Of, social, of online dating, there's two kinds of dating. So one is eHarmony where you fill out, I don't know, 25 fields of personal information to create your psychographic profile to find your perfect match. So that's eHarmony. Tinder is hot, not, hot, not, hot, not. <laughs> that's how the world is. I mean, yeah. That's how social media is. Um, I, get, I get your point and I think you're absolutely, I think you're absolutely right. Um, the last chapter, chapter 11 in the book is called, yeah. is, and I'm, Correct me when I'm wrong here. Uh, Ohana? Yes. Okay. And, and that's really uh, about, about family, friends, your own personal community, and, and your connections. I love the quote you started the uh, chapter off with Martha Graham, the famous uh, dancer and uh, choreographer, said, what people in the world think of you is really none of your business. Have you found that <laughs> to be important? Uh, well, Alan, I wouldn't put the freaking quote in the if I didn't, I, mean, <laughs> well, I thought maybe the editor had jammed it in or something. But what kind of asshole are you, Alan? <laughs> Just speak Canadian <laughs> asshole. <laughs> of course, right. I'm not a... no, I put shit in my book. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine and dandy. I, yeah, I get the point. But here you go again. I mean, in um, uh, the 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 relaunch of the entrepreneurial book, the art of entrepreneurship, you, you yeah. kind of get back into. You know, be a mensch. Be, yeah. you know, if you're going to be anything, be a mensch. And I, yeah. I found this in, in Chapter 11 with the people who were reflecting on their relationship with you or their observations of you. Man, you're, you're an all-star mensch. Congratulations. Well, thank you, first of all. But also, there, there is some uh, 
activity there, right? So I'm not going to publish a story where somebody says I'm an asshole. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> be, that would be chapter 13. Right. So, yeah. that, you know, that might not be a random collection of stories about me, okay? Let's just yeah, put yeah. it that way. <laughs> 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 so advice to people who are, you know, trying to be uh, more mensch-like, trying yeah. to have more joy, sure. and that joy is going to come from people for the most part. Um, how, how so for, do we first of our, all, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, let's define mensch. So mensch is kind of, it's a hard word to define. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's about being a gentle man or gentle woman. You take the high road. It's someone you would trust. You know, to use a hockey analogy, since most of your audience is in, um, in Canada, uh, a mensch would, let's say it's pickup hockey, right? And so you're playing pickup hockey. And you're just creaming the other team. Yeah. Just creaming them. So what a mensch would do is, you know, let's let's switch jerseys. Right. Uh, you go dark, I'll go light, I'll go help you even up your team. That's what a mensch would do. Take the okay. high road. Gotcha. Where, you know, most people would just say, Yeah, I'm just loving it as domination. Let's yeah. just, you know, score 14 goals on these guys in the next <laughs> hour. Yeah. So that that's what a mensch does, takes the high road. And I think life is a lot more pleasant and easy if you take the high road as a mensch for both you and people around you. Right, sure. So I also believe that there's a karmic scoreboard, and so someday there will be a reckoning. And all the people who stack the hockey pick teams, they're going to suffer. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, I notice you're wearing a Canva, some Canva swag there. Yeah. Because you're their uh, ev uh, chief evangelist. Now we talked about Canva three or four years ago, uh -huh. and really just getting started in Australia. And uh, woman founder, I think, or a couple yeah. were the founders. Yeah. And now yeah. they've been they they've been given this mythical uh, recognition as a unicorn. Yes. So how did that happen, guy? <laughs> well. I helped a little, but I'm not taking credit for it. Um, basically, uh, you know, sort of all the forces of the universe aligned. So yeah. they were very perceptive. They saw a need to help people make great graphics. Making great graphics is too hard using Photoshop and Illustrator. So they figured out, you know, a better way. Right. They made it based on the cloud. They made an iOS version and an Android version. Mm -hmm. And they have assembled a, a group of you know, 600 people who truly believe and truly are pursuing perfection. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm part of that team, but I'm kind of stepping back and telling you, I've never worked with a better team in my life. I wow. mean, never, wow. never <laughs> with a better team in my Wait life. Wait a minute. When you say never twice, I get some sort of uh, underlying thing about Apple there for some reason. What What was that? No, about? not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Guy, it's been a delight chatting to you, and thanks for giving us the time today. This is going to be very valuable to our subscribers. Right. We're going to be giving away 12 uh, autographed uh, books of uh, Wise Guy. And trust you me. You are? Oh, yeah. Oh, Did we're... I autograph them for you already? How we're... am I getting them to you? We're givers here at AQ's <laughs> Blog and Grill. <laughs> But, but did I sign them already? How, how no, we no, doing you've, got to, you've got to go to Kepler's. They now have them. Oh. You're going to sign them at Kepler's, and then I'm going to give them out to the subscriber. Did I know that? Yeah, yeah because you and I talked about it. Uh, uh, texted. <laughs> well, I'm glad you reminded me, because I didn't <laughs> did, did you hit your head on your surfboard uh, lately? <laughs> Well, no. you know, Alan, I am I am 64, so <laughs> <laughs> that's no excuse. You're gonna live to be 164, so keep, yeah. keep going. From your mouth, God's ears. There you go. <laughs> so subscribers, Guy Kawasaki, he's a godlike figure. He's a mensch <laughs> supremo. So all right, thank you. Take care. All right, see you later, guy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> So tune in for the next show and subscribe, and we'll let you know how you win one of uh, Guy Kawasaki's signed Wise Guy books. See you soon.